So in this video, we're going to look at uh, global extrema of a function of two variables. We're going to look at the extreme value theorem for functions of two variables. And then in the last video, we'll do an example of finding the global min and max for a function. But before we do this, what we're going to do is remember Calc 1. So we have the extreme value theorem in Calculus 1. And we want to recall this and understand it before we introduce the extreme value theorem for a function of two variables. So just as a reminder, if we had f of x as a continuous function on a closed interval, so when we did relative min and max, we were looking at our function f of x over an open interval. Now we're saying, look, the interval needs to be closed. So we want to look at a function f on a closed interval from a to b. And if we do that, as long as the function's continuous on the closed interval, the extreme value theorem guaranteed that the function had both a, uh, a minimum and a maximum value on that interval. We're not guaranteed that if we work with an open interval. But if we're working on with a closed interval, the idea is if you take a function f of x, so if we just draw a picture of what was going on, and here we have our x-axis where the input variables live, so if this is b and this is some point let's say a is right here the idea is that because we're working with a closed interval from a to b that means that the endpoints of the curve are included in the conversation about the min and max value of the function so what we had to do in calc 1 was look for the critical numbers first we found the critical numbers and those corresponded possibly to local maximum and local minimum values and then we had to look at the boundary of the interval as well so we had a closed interval from a to b so any critical numbers let's say this is critical number one let's say this is critical number two and then we evaluated f of a a was included on that closed interval we evaluated f of b we and then we evaluated the function at its critical numbers as well and then we were guaranteed by the extreme value theorem that one of these outputs or or more possibly would have the smallest value on the closed interval so it's possible to get the same largest value twice for example same smallest value twice but we're guaranteed there's a smallest value and a largest value on a closed interval and then the idea was that the you know, the smallest or largest values could occur at the critical numbers, but because we have a bounded curve, the high point on the curve or the low, low point on the curve could occur at the, cur at the interval boundary. So what's gonna change with the function of two variables then, because our domain doesn't live on the x-axis, it lives in the x-y plane, instead of having a closed interval, we're going to create a closed bounded region. And as long as we have a closed bounded region over which the function is everywhere continuous, then we're guaranteed that the function is going to have an absolute smallest and an absolute largest value over that closed region. And the largest or smallest value can occur in a couple ways. One, it's possible for the maximum to be at one of the critical numbers or sorry critical points because we're working with our critical points now ordered pairs that's a function of two variables so the absolute max or min can occur at a critical point but it can also occur anywhere on the boundary of r so before we just had to deal with the boundary on a closed interval being two points but now we have a more complicated situation where the boundary is a region which means the min or max values can occur at the corners of that bounded region. So you always have to check the corners of the bounded region. Here's the part of the surface corresponding to the corners. But you also have to check the curve, uh, the curve that is the intersection of a boundary. So we make a vertical plane with respect to the xy plane along the boundary, and that plane is going to come up and that plane is going to intersect. I drew that a little bit. So the plane, based on any one of the boundary lines in the xy plane, there's gonna be a plane that comes up. And then that plane is going to intersect the surface and we're going to get traces 
in that plane. And we have to look for the max min value along those traces in the uh, planes uh, that are uh, perpendicular to the xy plane and that contain the boundary of the bounded region. So the idea is, just kind of in summary, is we've got to look in a lot of different places now to find the max and the min value. We have to be careful. And then we also have to be careful when we find the critical point, we have to be careful that it actually is located inside the bounded region and not outside the bounded region. So the next video, we'll walk through step by step a process of finding the absolute min and the absolute value for a function of two variables. And what you'll see is it's going to be a little bit of a long and tedious process.